Welcome to my straightforward no messing about video tutorial. Today I'm looking at Abbey Fine Reader 12 Professional. Let's get right down to it and see how it works. Now with Abbey Fine Reader it gives you a number of options and the main options are to scan be it from a file on your computer or from the scanner. It enables you to scan into a Word document or into an image format. Also gives you options to export to Microsoft Excel and other tasks. But I'm going to concentrate on the common options first. So if you're using this for the first time, I want you to go to the Tools option at the top to check if your scanner is installed and the correct driver. Once you click Tools, scroll right down to the bottom and I want you to select Options. Now go to the Scan Forward Slash tab at the top and go straight down to the bottom and I want you to select your driver there. Now have a look because you might have a number of scanners already installed drivers. So make sure you're using the correct one and then it's plugged in or you've connected it to your PC through the wireless. Now I'm going to leave it on it currently what it is, Twain. Twain is the name of the scanner driver and the meaning of that is leave everything else default so I would leave that DTEP page orientation so if you're swapping a book round in a scanner it will automatically orientate the book page to the correct. It will automatically change the orientation of the book page to the correct way up and hence scan the correct way up. So leave everything default and click OK. So I've already put a document face down on a glass on the scanner and I'm going to click scan to Microsoft Word option. So do a left click, wait for the applet to pop up, then it gives me a number of other settings. Now don't get too carried away with the settings, I would leave everything default but if you're scanning something with really small text and it's not picking up very accurate, I would select the resolution option and choose the 600 dots per inch scan. Now this can vary depending on your scanner. Some scanners don't go that high, but most do. So that will pick up small text and be more accurate. But for this case, I'm just leaving it on 300 dots per inch. And dots per inch stands for also scan mode. I'm going to leave it on grayscale, which I say is optimal for using optical character recognition. But if you've got a coloured document in a the book, then choose colour. It seems to work just as well. Paper settings. Leave that default, but you can play with the paper settings if you need to. For example, A5, depending on what's been scanned. Now, image processing is what I showed you earlier in the tools menu at the top. Remember, tools, options, we selected your driver. Click that open, and that will show the same options here. Leave that default unless you really need to change a few options like photo correction here. Last of all, you can use automatic document feeder or if I will tick for pause for 10 seconds, every 10 seconds the scanner automatically starts scanning so it just gives you enough time to turn the page over so you can keep flowing, keep your workflow going quite well. Or you can change the seconds, you might say well, it's only 20 seconds to change your page or you might not do alternative pages and stuff so you can choose the time you want there I'm going to untick that because I'm just doing one now I can preview first to see how it's going to look or I'm going straight into a scan I'll go straight into a scan so I'm going to scan that to a word document so depending on the speed of your scanner if it's wireless it will take a lot longer than it will using a wired Now I can choose to scan next because remember I didn't tick that option where I can have to scan and scan automatically every certain amount of seconds. So I'm just going to click stop scanning. It's going to analyse it on the left as you see it's doing now and then it will give me the recognised on the right and open up in Microsoft Word document automatically which is done. Now as you can see here I can now highlight the text. I might want to colour code stuff. Highlight key points. Or you might want to actually highlight stuff using as a reference if you require. And cut that out. You can then delete stuff. And if you've got text to speech option, you can actually have that read back to you as well. Really handy. I'm just going to close that a second, go back to Every Fine Reader and show you how it worked. Everything green here on the left, if I hover over, you can see the little T on the cursor it indicates that's what it sees as text. It's pretty good at analysing that. It doesn't always get it right, but it's pretty good. Now here on the red you can see it's 
that indicates images. Now if I come down the bottom here and if I drag this window up a bit so you can see better. There you go. So there's all the text in green and there's the image in red. So you can choose whether or not you want that in your document or not. And you can highlight stuff that hasn't picked up. For example, if I come down here, if I reanalyze that page, so click analyze again, and then click save page, click read. So I've reanalyzed it, I can choose whether I want to save it or not. But what I'm actually going to do here is you might decide you don't want these pictures. So I could right click and click delete of the original, or come at the top you've got keep pictures. So if I click that, I've turned it off so no pictures will be exported or recognized from the left side to the actual Word document on the right, and then I can export it. But I want the pictures there, so I'm going to turn them back on. You also choose keep headers and footers from the original if you have them. You can also choose keep line breaks, which you might need to do in certain circumstances. You can also add load confidence characters and non-dictionary words. You can also have previous errors. Now let me explain. If I go to the top here, verification, click that button. So you can go through it to make sure if you're happy, you will click skip on that. And any words that might not come up correctly and it's not picking up too well. As I skip through that all, as you can see. So use that option as well to verify all the text is correct. Now as I said earlier, I come back to the left. Say it hasn't recognised something properly. Say there's a part of an image there it didn't pick up but it saw it as text or vice versa. Let me show what we could do. Now if I click the image button here, you might decide part of that is not actually text you want that as an image. So I'll just use this example. So I'm going to create a rectangle around that option there. And you see if I hover over the button I've chose, draw picture area, now that becomes an image. So now if I do read page again, and now you can see on the left, so what it's done is actually pitch it up as an image and not a text. So that will be just one standard text. You might want to do that in certain circumstances, it's up to you, but then you just use those options there to highlight what's text and what's images. Because sometimes it just won't quite pick up the images if it's a logo or whatever. So you can make it pick it up as an image by using that second option. Or if you want to type confirm it's a text using the OCR option, choose the draw text area with the draw button for text. So that's scanning from a scanner, nice and easy. If you've got multiple pages from a book, they'll all be listed down here on the left all the way down. Then you can right click on what you don't want and delete or rotate page and so on. But what I want to do is actually scan a PDF that you might have downloaded from a website. Be it Moodle, Blackboard or Google Scholar or Google Books or anywhere. Let's have a look. So I can click left button to do a new task. Click in there. And this time I could do image or PDF file to Microsoft Word. I'm just going to close that window, or I can just click the open image button, Control plus O shortcut. On my desktop, and there's one there for Excel. Let it analyse it again. As you see on the left, it's analysing how many pages, and there's three. Then it will start highlighting. And there's our scan on the left. Again, green indicates text, and the red borders indicate image. Now, if I actually zoom into this, we can see we've got numbers and it's picked it up as an image. Now if I go back up to text at the top and now I'm going to start to create a rectangle around that in text mode and then I'm going to click read again. Now if I come back over here it will now be in text mode and not image mode. Now I can't guarantee how that's going to look in quality wise definitely gives you an option to do that. Let's send it to Word and have a look anyway. So click the send to Word button at the top. I'm not 100% perfect but not bad if you do need that in just standard text and not an image. But you can leave it in red border as an image if you require it's entirely up to you. Also on the left if I click here it gives the number of pages you've got. Again you might decide you don't want something as an image so you can use the uh, text area button there. Or you can right click what you don't want here, then scroll down to delete page from documents. So if you've got 50 pages or whatever you don't want certain pages, you can delete them on the left before you actually then convert them and send them to Word. So it's up to you how you want to work there. 
At the top here could be useful, which is set copy, format. If you actually have a look on the right, you can see it changing the format. Plain text, if I click on plain text, that's how it will look as a plain text, like in a text document. And flexible layout, which is more kind of like HTML, which is your internet layout. And it's that copy, which I kind of leave it on, which is similar to that HTML option. Also, if you're using different languages, you can use this option here and select. I've got auto select on here, but you can choose by clicking more languages, choose specific languages you need to convert. Really important to do that if you're using different languages. And that's how easy it is to use Abbey Fine Reader 12 Professional. There's a lot more to it, but that will get you up and running on the basics. I hope that was helpful.